Today, I'm not only taking you through the art of charcoal illustration, but will create a stunning winter watercolor floral. Hey friends, welcome. My name is Shada Campbell, and today we're doing something I've never done before, and that is adding charcoal or graphite to our watercolor florals. Since today's project incorporates both illustration and painting, I think it's only right that I tell you that I have both a floral illustration e-course and two watercolor e-courses. They're all available on my website, shadacampbellcourses.com, and this week they are all on major sale for Black Friday. Use code BLACKFRIDAY23 to save 30% not only on the courses, but on the discounted bundles as well. So I popped by the art store and I treated myself to some pencils, uh, graphite pencils, and some charcoal pencils. So the charcoal is really dark black. It's gonna be really soft and almost gritty or dusty looking. The graphite, I did purchase some like really soft pencils, like 8B and 6B. Those ones are gonna go on really sort of thick and dark. You're not gonna have the precision you would have with like an HB pencil, which is kind of the Goldilocks, that perfect blend between H, which is hard, and the B, which is a soft graphite. So you're looking for like 8B, 6B. So we want these soft leads. The graphite charcoal look is so perfectly imperfect. And if you've been here for a minute, then you know that your girl loves a sketchy black line. I've always been a fan of adding a pen to my watercolors. Watercolors with their transparent nature uh, lend themselves really well to mixed media. So adding pen or in this case, adding graphite or charcoal. So what I want to do today, and this is something I haven't done before, is uh, do a mixed media winter watercolor floral. So I'm starting by practicing some holly berries, some cedar. I recommend you purchase a few charcoal and graphite pencils, grab your sketchbook, and then just practice some leaves and berries and even flowers and see what you like. What charcoal do you prefer? Um, are you interested maybe more in the graphite pencils than the charcoal? You know, get something really soft so that you do get a thick, line that really is going to show through the watercolor and just follow along with me here and do a bit of practice work for the holly i start with a cluster of little circles for the berries and then i do these really loose leaves maybe a branch or two and when i'm drawing with the charcoal one of the things i found is i don't want to keep the lines too close i want to leave a little negative space and just have this really very whimsical uh, drawing with a little bit of movement in it as well now I'm going to also add some florals to my watercolor winter um, painting because I don't want everything to be green and red. So incorporating some flowers allows me to add some white and that's going to make all the winter greenery and the red berries really pop. So I started doing a sketch with my HB pencil. That's like my schoolhouse pencil, the perfect blend of hard and soft. And then go over that initial sketch once you're happy with it with like a really soft graphite, like an 8B or a charcoal pencil, if you are liking the charcoal at this point. And I love the, the loose, whimsical look. It's very illustrative and I'm digging it. This is my first time drawing with charcoal. I've never done it before. And now that I've done a bit of practice, I wanna to flip to a fresh page and we will start the initial stages of what will be our final piece. So using uh, the HB pencil, just a regular pencil, we are going to start sketching a winter floral. Now, I just started with the holly berry because I know I want it to feature prominently in this piece. So I'm placing some berries, some leaves. Remember, this is just your first sketch. You can see I'm just trying stuff out. I'm also going to place a large white flower near the center. So I'm sketching just like a loose, you know, five petal flower with a messy cluster of dots and lines at the center to represent the stamen. I put another flower in behind it. That'll give the composition a nice focal point, like two large white flowers. We've got the holly at the bottom, and then we can surround those larger botanicals with lots of cedar and pine and little winter berries and tiny leaves. And that gives us a nice contrast of size, some large stuff, some delicate stuff, and there's your composition. 
Uh, your first composition, I might add. Mine changed a lot, but we have to start somewhere. So don't feel like everything has to be perfect right off the bat. That's why we're working in a sketchbook and not on our expensive watercolor paper. So now what I'm doing is I'm going over the sketch or the illustration with my charcoal, just making sure that I like the way it looks when I sort of begin to finish it. Although this is just my sketch in my sketchbook. And I'm really happy with the way this is looking so far. Doing it in charcoal is going to give me a real sense of what the piece looks like and what I need to change about it. Because even though I've been doing this a long time, I almost always need to change a few things in order to get a balanced composition that I'm really happy with. Speaking of creating a balanced and pleasing composition, here is my absolute favorite step, my secret ingredient, and that is tracing. Tracing allows you to keep what you like while changing what you don't like about your illustration. If you were an author, you would edit your writing. This is your editing process as an artist. So make sure to go over what you like. You can move the tracing paper around a bit. I felt like the whole right side of mine was kind of cluttered. So I just flipped to a new page and sketched it anew. I added one more white flower. And then what do we do next? Well, we want to transfer our final illustration. I'm happy with it. So I covered the back in graphite and then I grabbed my watercolor paper, placed my illustration right in the center, and then I take a nice sharp pencil and I go over the entire illustration in order to transfer it to the watercolor paper. So this allows you to feel really confident when you start that painting. You can see the entire illustration laid out before you. You've already worked on the composition and worked out any kinks and bits that you didn't like. I mean, sometimes I trace my drawings three, four times, making little changes each time until I'm totally happy with it. With this one, I've got it transferred to the watercolor paper. I can go over that nice light transfer with my charcoal, and then it will be time to paint. So there she is, the final design, or is it the final? No, once I saw it on the watercolor paper, everything just looked too squished. I really wish that I had noticed that before I transferred it to watercolor paper, but I didn't. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna get out another piece of tracing paper and I'm just gonna trace it again. This time moving the tracing paper around and spreading everything out so that everything doesn't look so tightly clustered at the center. Doing that is going to add a lot more movement and life to my composition. So we just need a little more negative space, a little bit more movement. I've added some tinier berries kind of flying off all the edges around the perimeter. They frame everything really beautifully. So goodbye initial composition. You helped us get where we're going. Here's my new final trace. We're gonna tape it in place this time, right in the center. And this time I just thought I'd do something different just to show you some options. I'm going to use graphite transfer paper instead of just covering the back in graphite in pencil. Uh, it's just a tool that you can have in your toolkit, but if you don't have transfer paper, just add the pencil on the back of the tracing paper and transfer that way. Either way, you're tracing over or drawing over the entire design. You can see with the graphite transfer paper, the design is very, very clear, which is helpful and you can purchase that on Amazon. All the supplies are linked in the video description as usual. It's a great way to support this channel and get the exact supplies that you always see me using. So now I will go over my illustration one more time, still using my graph or my charcoal pencil and I'm getting these big, very whimsical, illustrative, almost dusty black lines. I really love the charcoal. Something I'm thinking about as I go over the illustration is just leaving negative space. Like not every leaf, not every line needs to be connected uh, because there is going to be so much color in this piece. So don't feel like it needs to be like a coloring book image where all the lines are the same thickness and they're all connected. Do some really light lines that are barely there and some that don't connect. And I think you'll get a really painterly beautiful look. We've also added that movement and space by going over it again, by tracing it one more time. As I said, hey, even though I have the experience, I always end up, you know, working out a composition a few times. That's just my process. And I love the second one. It looks a lot, it just looks more pleasing. It has a better balance and a better movement. So with that done, let's welcome my watercolor supplies to the desk. I've got my Munio 48 
pan set of watercolors, some clean water. Um, I'm using a number eight long round brush. Again, all supplies linked in the video description, but really any watercolors that you love are great for this. And here's what I think you're really gonna enjoy. All we're doing is basically coloring in. So I, for the holly, I'm using a really warm, dark green. Um, you could start with any green for this and then just add a little bit of red, a little bit of brown, and you'll get that, that warm, almost dead green. You could um, use a little green gray mixed with a bit of brown or red if you have the same set of paints. That's one of my favorite greens. And what we're doing is just basically coloring in our own illustration. And I want to play here and leave some negative space. I'm also going outside of the lines. I don't want the drawing to dictate exactly where I paint. I want this to look very free and whimsical. Have I said the word whimsical enough? As usual, that's what I'm going for. And so you can see I've left some negative space, some white paper showing through, and I'm going outside of those sketchy black lines. And I think that looks so playful and so fun. And for me, that's really the point of having the charcoal on there is to um, not follow it exactly, but to play with it and have the two mediums really complement one another beautifully. Next, we'll work on a little bit of pine together. So grab a dark green, mix some indigo or even violet into your green, and then you're gonna do these long, thin lines. They don't have to be too tightly clustered, just these long brush strokes. Then rinse that brush, and with a damp, clean brush, not watery, not wet, just damp, we'll come back in and wet those lines, kind of must them up a little. So you've got some really dark spots and then some more transparent, lighter spots, and then add some wispy, thin lines all around kind of pulling out the look of that pine sprig. And I think that looks really nice. You can add a different color of green if you like, and it'll look really lively. As you paint, remember, you do not have to follow those graphite or charcoal lines. Add some berries, add some little cedar sprigs. For a lot of winter greenery, I just like to shake the brush a little bit and see what kind of pine it looks like. <laughs> Is it cedar? Is it white pine? Uh, I ran a little bit of brown right through those branches, those seed or those pine branches. I'm filling in some more of the holly leaves and just doing some um, green splotches kind of in between the flowers. And then I'm going to come in here and we'll do another pine together. So start with those dark green thin lines, come in with a wet or damp brush, not super wet. And we're just going to pull that green and do some more thin lines. If it's really watery and light, you can now add some more dark green you just want a variance of the really light and the really dark and some messy, splotchy, washed out areas and then some really thin, delicate lines. So some mess and some precision, <laughs> some dark and some light. And that gives a really nice look. Okay, let's give this a little bit of Christmassy flair. I mixed a really dark, rich red. Um, you could try mixing a little brown or even a little violet into your red to give it kind of a burgundy look, a really rich winter red. And I'm just filling in these berries, making sure to leave lots of negative space, maybe not on everyone, but definitely on quite a few of them. So the more negative space, the better. They will just look so much more lively. And again, you can go outside the lines. <laughs> That's probably best if you do. All right, let's grab our palette. I'm gonna show you my palette here because I am mixing up a color for the white flowers. So what color do we use for white flowers on white paper? Well, I like to mix white paint with a little bit of French gray and just a hint, a little touch of brown. Come over to the paper and I'll show you. It gives me this really beige or warm gray color, very light. And what we wanna do is paint the shadow and the texture of the flower. The last thing we wanna do is paint like a gray flower. We want the flower to look white. So all we need to have a lot of paper showing through, but we're painting, we are painting the shadow. So we're adding these loose brush strokes right at the center of the flower because the flowers are a little concave. So we would get a little um, more shadow there and then leaving lots of the page showing through, especially on the outer tips of the petals. And, you know, I, I just kept it really loose. The graphite kind of blended a bit, no big deal. And then I'm gonna grab a smaller brush and I wanna mix kind of like a really purpley burgundy. So I'm doing violet mixed with red, got a little brown in there too to mute the color so it's not too bright. 
And that is the color I want to use for all these teeny tiny delicate little berries that are um, framing my larger flowers and, and holly really beautifully. So we're going to frame the large elements at the center of our painting with all these sweet little delicate berries. Definitely add some extra ones in there, some little wisps, some little tiny lines of the brush. That's going to add to that loose, lovely watercolor magic that we love. We want this to look sketchy and messy and magical. And then I just mixed a little brown, like a very light sort of purpley brown. Uh, it's a bit of red brown, a bit of violet, a little bit of white and lots of water in there. So I've got, like I said, a brown with a whole lot of purple in it. And that is the color I'm using for the little leaves uh, that I have have surrounding these tiny berries. I didn't want to do more green. I just thought that's going to be a whole lot of green on this piece. So don't forget, you decide what color things are going to be. And in this case, these delicate berries create this beautiful perimeter for the larger um, elements. And they're also going to create a nice color contrast and add some warmth to the entire piece. So if you're still with me, woo, thank you. This is a big mammoth video and I'm trying something that I really haven't done before. I hope you'll give it a try too. Remember, you can do as many traces as you need to. And the nice thing is if you don't like the way the watercolor goes on, you just transfer it one more time, that same trace and try it again. So you have all these chances. And speaking of watercolor and learning and trying new things, remember my Black Friday sale is on right now. You can get 30% off my watercolor e-courses, my floral illustration e-course, which is brand new. I've also got a live workshop on the site and there's 30% off all my bundles. So the bundle prices are already insanely good and you can get 30% off this weekend, this whole week. So run over there, use code BLACKFRIDAY23 on my site, that's shadacampbellcourses.com. Well, that's pretty much it. So I think the only thing left to do, sign it. It feels good to sign a painting when you're happy with it and you've worked through all the kinks. I really love that I tried something different here and I hope you're into that as well. Head over to my site, shadacampbellcourses.com, do a little Christmas shopping for yourself, of course. <laughs> and I will see you soon with a new tutorial. Don't forget to subscribe.